Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, and I am joined by the one and only John Jorgensen. Hey there, wolf dens and highlighter pens. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know. You Perfect. asked me to do one before we started, and that's that's the best that came that, out. That works. That works. I, I put him on the spot, just so you all know. I told him like two seconds before we shot that to give us one of his world famous video openers. Uh, anyway, I am super glad to have John here on the channel. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about himself, his life, what a bold life looks like to him. Uh, so yeah, everyone, welcome John to the channel. Cool. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, so to start off, uh, for those who don't know you, you want to tell us a little bit about your story, maybe how your, uh, how your testimony goes, uh, whatever you want to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, any sort of uh, story or testimony of mine has to start with a summer camp that I grew up going to in the Chicagoland suburbs. Um, it was sort of this stereotypical yet not stereotypical camp in that it was a stereotypical summer camp, a stereotypical Christian camp, and a stereotypical theater camp, but all three of those combined into one week, right? Yeah. Um, and it was there at 13 years old that I, I heard the message of the gospel. And when I say heard it, I, I had listened to it before, right. but it had never really made sense uh, until... Until that night, it was presented to me, and I went out to this bench outside of the chapel, and, and I had this realization. You know, I realized, gosh, I've always wanted God in my life. I've heard about this God of the universe. I'd love for him to be part of my life. I just never realized that God also wanted me. He wanted me too. And it was through Jesus that uh, we were able to connect and enter into this relationship. And so that was sort of the night that I got saved gave my heart to Jesus, whatever language you want to use, right? Uh, and so from then on, I said, you know, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to be a Christian now, whatever that means at 13 years old. But of course, you know, like like many people, I went off to high school and I, I sort of struggled with this double life, right? Being one person at school, one person at church, and and kind of keeping all of those struggles and all of those sins that I found myself sort of knee deep in. I kept those really bogged down and didn't tell anyone about them for a really long time. And I was actually invited back to that same camp after I had graduated high school to share my testimony. Right. But at that point, I didn't really have much of a testimony other than I gave my life to Jesus and haven't really talked to him since, you know? Uh, and so when I went back and gave that testimony, I, I was totally honest. I was honest about my brokenness. I was honest about all the ways that I had messed up and that I wasn't necessarily this perfect guy that I had been putting out to the world, right? And to my surprise, the campers that were there that year, they didn't excommunicate me. They didn't throw fruit at me or anything like that. But instead, they came down and they thanked me for being open and honest. You know, me talking about my imperfections made them feel a little bit better about the fact that they had sin in their lives. Yeah. They had shame as well. And we all began to open up and talk about it. And I think that was, that was a really formative moment for me in that I saw in that moment that something that I could say, something I could share about what God had done in my life could have a positive impact on somebody else. Right. And that was the first time I realized that this was even possible for me. Yeah. And to me, that was like a drug and that was the greatest high I could ever have. And so ever really, ever since that moment, I have really done two things. One, I've started to take my faith way more seriously yeah. uh, and really started to walk with Jesus in, in an intentional way. Right. And then two, I have tried to do just that, to share either the experiences or whatever testimony or whatever lesson or wisdom that I am gleaning from God and share it with other people, whether that's through video written form, live speaking, whatever that is. And I've been doing that now for almost the last 10 years. Wow. wow. That's awesome, man. And it's, yeah. I think it's super inspirational, kind of twofold uh, for me. I'm, I'm actually a youth pastor, so it's always inspirational whenever I talk to someone who had their life changed in, in, while they're in youth or while they're at camp or something like that. But then I think so many of us think that whenever we have a huge encounter with Jesus like you did, that, you know, it's a, full 180, we turn around, we're, you know, living right. Uh, but man, it's crazy to see that, you know, sometimes we don't exactly live up to that. Sometimes we do fall away, but to see what we can still do with our lives, I think that's crazy cool, man. Yeah, or somehow we think that it's the end of the journey. Right. When in fact, it's actually just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Absolutely. That's perfect, man. Yeah. Yeah. So anyone out there, if you've just now followed Jesus and you're falling away, it's 
that's not the end of the journey. That's just the no. beginning, man. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's awesome. And uh, so you touched on it just a little bit uh, about, you know, how your YouTube ministry kind of started, but you want to share that with us, how, how you started yeah. YouTube and what. And yeah, absolutely. So, so it, again, like, like I said, any story of mine, it all finds its way back to that camp. Right. Nice. And so after I sort of shared my testimony uh, for several summers after that, throughout college, I was invited back as a, as a counselor. Right. And part of my job was to get up and not necessarily to preach or to give a full sermon, mm -hmm. but to sort of center our hearts around whatever the devotion topic was for that night, whether it was purity or whether it was, you know, greed or selfishness or whatever we were talking about. Right. And while I had had that experience of, of sharing my faith and while I, I loved that experience, it was still brand new to me, and I was still terrified of doing it in any sort of way. Uh, but it was part of my job, and so I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I want to keep it as short as possible, and I want to write everything down so I can just read it word for word. Yeah. And I was sort of, one of my first summers, I was you know, tasked with putting together something to center our hearts around this topic of purity. You know, Wednesday night at camp was famously, you know, abstinence night or the right. sex talk. You know, and we would and I remembered, you know, going to camp for all those years. So much of the discussion around purity and around abstinence was based in the physical. Right. How far is too far? How how much can I do with my girlfriend or boyfriend before we enter into the sin category? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? What constitutes sex? Exactly. It was all so based in the physical. And, you know, I watched as myself and so many of my fellow campers they went back to school after that camp was over and they struggled in those areas right. in, in so many ways. And, you know, sitting down to sort of center our hearts around that purity discussion, I, I sort of had this thought, like, there's got to be more to it. Right. There's got to be more to it than just the physical. And what sort of poured out was this idea that when we give ourselves away in a relationship, really before we should, you know, when we give ourselves away physically, when we give ourselves away to somebody emotionally, really the problem is we have a, a mistaken sense of identity. We, we don't realize how much we are worth. And so we're willing to just give ourselves away to someone who isn't willing to stake their entire life, their entire life on us, right, through a covenant of marriage. And so I thought, okay, if we can get these students to reframe and, and re-see their identity that they are incredibly valuable and that they are incredibly loved and that they are worth far more than than they realize then maybe that would change the way that they interact in romantic relationships and so i sat down and i wrote two poems essentially i didn't know they were poems at the time called who you are a message to all men and who you are a message to all women and this was 2010 or something and i went and i shared them at this camp and students came up to me they're like we didn't know you wrote spoken word poetry and i was like Neither did I. What's that? Yeah. Uh, and they really enjoyed them. And again, it was that feeling of, wow, something I wrote had a positive effect on someone else. I want to do more of this. And so for the next four or five summers, that's what I did. I would write three to five poems each summer and sort of share them at this camp. And after I was done with that job, I said, OK, I want to take some of these poems and I want to put them online just so these students, when they go back to school and they need some encouragement, they can sort of watch them. And so... I got together with a few friends and we decided to put a few poems on the internet, not because we wanted to start a YouTube channel, you know, right. that wasn't necessarily even a thing back then, or at least not as big of a thing as it is now. We just wanted to sort of, again, share with those students. And to our surprise, you know, those students shared them with their friends who shared them with their friends and things kind of went a little crazy. And for a long time, it was, you know, a, a central hobby of mine. And now today it is sort of part of my career. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. I, I know the videos you're talking about, I've used them with my students countless times. And, and I hope when my students <laughs> awesome. get on my channel to watch this, they're like, hey, that's that guy that Jeff's always showing us. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah, and those, I mean, actually, I think those videos are how I actually found your channel years ago. Uh -huh. And and you're one of the first Christian YouTubers I ever found and started watching that kind of led to my channel today. Very cool, <laughs> so, yeah. that's awesome. So yeah, um, actually, I, I love those videos. Uh, I actually love all the spoken word you do. Those are crazy good. I, I have a spoken word in the works. It's been like that oh. for like a year now, but um, <laughs> it's it's. I add like a line or two every couple weeks. 
Yeah, yeah. We, well, I mean, you got to get it out there at some point. Yeah, that's 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 my goal. That's <laughs> it. Day. But okay. Um, so who you, I know we all we keep going back to the camp. So who would you say uh, what person has influenced you the most in your faith? Yeah, that's a great I mean, that's a great question. Um, so I I grew up in a home where church and the idea of God and Jesus, it was way more of a tradition than it was anything else, right? It was just the thing that a normal white middle class suburban family with two and a half kids did, right? We went to church on Sunday because that's the right thing to do. It wasn't because anyone in my family necessarily had a relationship with Jesus in any sort of way. And so I was actually the first one in my family to sort of come to that sort of that sort of understanding of what faith is, right? right. Um, and so then I'm, I'm 14 years old, and through many of my formative years, you know, my my parents and my sister, they're on their own journey of faith. You know, they're not necessarily my spiritual elders, quote unquote. And so I had many, many people uh, come around me, including many of my counselors at that camp, who even when I was in a season of sort of secret rebellion, right. and even when they sort of had an idea that that's the season I was in, would still love on me unconditionally, yeah. would still care for me, would still sought to to guide me and to set an example for me. Uh, and so many of them really, uh, they became not only mentors, but close friends. And then sort of a as I grew up and I started to develop this gift of speaking and teaching, those same people who were now in, in higher forms of leadership at this camp, they sort of threw a microphone in my hand and said, hey, go have free reign to develop this gift. Right which was unbelievable. You know, I was this 18 year old kid who really had no idea what he was doing and they saw some sort of potential in me and they said, here's the microphone, John, go and do something with it. Um, and so really it, so much of my, my faith, both personally and the way I express it publicly is because of those people who came before me and they, they saw potential in me and they also saw a child of God in me who needed to be loved and guided and forgiven and cared for and listened to. Um, and yeah, so I, I would say the counselors at that camp who are still dear friends today were, were extremely formative for me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, it's so cool to keep hearing so much about like that camp and the people that yeah. poured into you at that camp. I mean, it's just, it's motivating for, you know, youth ministers and people that yeah. do stuff like that. I hope yeah, a lot you of them just, are watching you that. You never know who you are speaking to. You never know who you're praying with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, they, those counselors, when I was you know, 15 years old, they certainly would have never thought that I would have this large faith-based platform right. you, know, yeah. tw you know, 10, 12 years from then. But you, know, you never know who you're speaking to, and you never know who really needs it. Yeah, and that's, that's encouraging to see that, yeah, I mean, you could pour into someone who goes out and – makes a difference. I mean, makes a huge difference. That's, yeah. that's so cool, man. Uh, like I said, I love hearing that it's super encouraging for me because well, youth ministry be. working with teenagers isn't always easy. No, it's uh, not, but you're, but you're doing, doing such important, important work. Yeah, and, absolutely. You, know, you should know that. Yeah. So, uh, kind of spinning off of that, what one thing, whether it be like a book or a conference, uh, uh, like, you know, thing that you can hold in your hand, what, what would you say has uh, been most influential to you? Hmm. You, you know, know Honestly, I think that discovering a this is so this is so cliche. So I'm gonna say the Bible, but I'm not gonna say the Bible right. if that okay. makes sense, okay. right? Um, I'm I'm gonna say learning to study and understand and and have a joy mm -hmm. of learning from Scripture has definitely been the thing that has that has shaped and molded and grown me the most. Now, how, how I sort of came to that love and that understanding, that, that's sort of the resource that I'll share, I suppose. And for me, that has come honestly through podcasts, really, through podcasts. sermon podcasts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because, I mean, I grew up going to Willow Creek, um, Willow Creek Community Church, which is one of the largest, most influential, you know, megachurches in the country. So we, 
we have world-class teacher after world-class teacher just funneling in and out of there. Like if you go a month without hearing from a New York Times bestselling author, it was a down month. You know what I mean? So just extremely spoiled, right? But then I went off to college and I went to an amazing church in college. However, we weren't getting Christine Kane and, you know, Erwin McManus and, you know, John Maxwell every weekend. But we were still getting good quality teaching. Mm -hmm. But during that time, I also would supplement sort of my learnings on Sunday with sermon podcasts from the best teachers around the country. And it was there through through listening to those talks and, and listening to them over and over and over again that I began to pick out, oh, this is how Tim Keller breaks down the scriptures. Yeah. Oh, this is how Stephen Furtick gets into the Bible. And, and as I began to sort of pull those things out, I thought, oh, okay. And I began to apply those things in my own life. Um, and that that was huge for me. And so the fact that we there are these this inc- there's this incredible resource where you can almost attend a church and get their teaching in terms of, you know, you can attend in terms of getting their teaching from hundreds of thousands of miles away, right? right yeah. You can be forever away. And I think that's that's an incredible resource that has really, really formed me, being able to learn from the best teachers in the world, even if they're across the country. Right. Yeah, so I completely agree with that. I'm a huge fan of podcasts. Uh, pretty much anywhere I go, like I'll – run into my students or something at the store and I'll have headphones in. They'll ask me like what I'm listening to. I'm like, you've probably never heard of him. Yeah, usually it's like Tim Keller, Judas yep. Smith, something like that. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, that's what I completely agree with that. Love that. I love podcasts. Uh, actually, I'm a huge fan of your podcast. Oh, uh, thanks. Yeah, which uh, for the record, guys, I'll have that link down below as well as John's channel and all that. So be sure to check that out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so kind of spinning off of that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just been off of that talking about your podcast stuff. So what do you say your daily time with God looks like? Whether that's prayer, meditation, scripture, reading, podcasts, what's that? Yeah, like totally. You? Um, so for me, uh, I, it, it molds and it, and it changes all the time, right? There, there, I, uh, something that I've sort of developed is, is that just like a, any relationship, right? My relationship with my wife, we go through seasons, we go through seasons where like, Watching TV together is the best thing that we do. And it really is a way that we (laughs) connect so much. And then we go through seasons where it is all about taking intentional time to talk with one another, you know, and then we go through seasons where it's all about like we're we're often doing things independently where we're just praying for each other, you know, from afar. And so with any sort of relationship, something that I'm learning as not being married very long, but have having been with my wife for many years is you need to keep trying new things. You need to keep doing new, finding new ways to connect with that person. And I think connecting with God is the same way. I think we, so many of us, we are so limited in our idea of here's how I connect with God, right? Because many of us, for the most part, we've gone to the same church who has taught us the same ways to connect with God since forever, right? We thought, well, I connect with God because in the morning I pray and I spend 10 minutes studying my Bible. Right, and right. that's an amazing way to connect and grow in your spiritual life with the Lord, but that is not the only way to do it, right? And so for me, you know, my times with God, specifically right now, it really on a, on a daily basis include the shower and any time that I'm running. That's my prayer time, yeah. right? Nice. And something I've been very convicted in recently in terms of study is oftentimes my study, I got, I got into a, a sort of unhealthy place where all of my Bible study and all of my sort of teaching and sermon study, it was all just to feed into the content that I was creating for the channel. Yeah. I wasn't really doing any for myself. It was, I'm only studying the Bible so that I can turn it into a Bible study video. Yeah. I'm only listening to this sermon so that I can learn and apply these things for myself as a speaker, right? And I was convicted a little while ago and now I'm really trying to get intentional about separating that this is my study time for me and for my spiritual health. And I'm not trying to turn this into a video that I can share with other people necessarily, but but this is for me and it might someday. Um, And so 
that that's tough because now I'm doing like double duty on Bible study most days, but, but it's just that, that it comes with the territory, you know? And so there's, there are the, again, there are the basics, right. Of the, the basic simple ways we all connect with God through prayer, through study of his word, through community and fellowship and, and through, through teaching or worship, right. Within those categories though, I, I really encourage everyone to just experiment and try new things, you know, listen to something different, go, you know, go and experience a different type of community and how they worship God. Uh, because I think there are just an infinite number of ways that we can connect with our creator. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I like that. You kind of change it up, keep it interesting. I was actually talking to my wife cause we've been on kind of like a keto diet for about a year now. Oh, nice. And yeah. Uh, so, but I, I found that we've done this before we get on diets and it lasts for so long. And then I'm like, I think the main thing is we just get bored of the diet. And totally. then, so yeah, you get tired of eating the same stuff. I'm like, so what if we did like diet cycling, like six months on keto, six months, you know, low calorie or paleo or something. And I can kind of see that same thing with like, if your Bible studies, the exact same thing every single day, it can kind of get stale. So, you know, mix it up, cycle up, just, stay with it but keep it interesting yeah and, absolutely and I, I totally get what you get you're saying about you know only reading the bible and stuff or only studying or listening just for content that you're putting out um i've gotten those traps you know i'd speak every week for youth and then put out a video every week and i, I noticed that i'm only reading to write a sermon or write a message and yeah it's, it, you can get stuck in that cycle too where you're not yeah, and you're not even reading yourself. to necessarily apply it to your own life. You're right. only thinking about how can these students or how can this audience apply it to their lives. Right. Yeah. And then you're, yeah. I think I heard it said the best I've heard. I think it was at a youth pastor conference or something, but they said, uh, you know, your, your spiritual life is sort of like a teacup. And you don't want to actually teach from the cup. You want to teach from the saucer where it's overflowed out of the cup. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, because you empty that cup, you have nothing left for yourself either. Yeah, so that's, that's really good. good. Yeah, I, like I like that, that a lot. lot. Yeah, so you teach from the overflow, and that's something I try to keep going in my own life. But I, I, I like you said, I kind of get stuck in preparing messages and don't take anything just for myself. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a it's a weird trap you can get into. Totally. So, yeah. So uh, my whole channel is about encouraging Christians to go out and live boldly for Jesus. Yeah. So in your own words, in your own definition, what would living a bold life for Jesus look like to you? It's a great question. Yeah. So I'll start by saying what I don't think a bold life has to mean. Okay. I'm not saying that this that this isn't what a bold life means, but I think most of us think that in order, especially you know, you work in youth, and and a big sort of a pet peeve that I have with youth is that so much of youth ministry is either about so getting them to be saved salvation and then we skip right to evangelism right and there's no sort of like discipleship so yeah. it's like we're teaching them to we're teaching them how to share a faith that they haven't really taken time to develop yet right. you know what i mean and so when a lot of times when, especially when young people hear you got to be bold about your faith they think that that only ever means you stand in the hallways at school and scream repent right, right? Yeah. and you you get you know, you save five of your classmates per day, and that's what it means to live boldly for God. And that might be what it means for, for some people, right? Especially people with that evangelism gift, mm -hmm. right? However, for me, living a bold life, it, it, I think it more means living as a bold example, right? right? My hope is that people would know that I'm a Christian or, or that I that I am living for Jesus before I even have to tell them that, right. you know, uh, I think being living bold for Christ is living the way that Christ lived, which would mean not only boldly proclaiming the word of God, but boldly serving people, yeah. boldly loving people, being boldly compassionate, being boldly countercultural, all of these other things that Christ did as well. He right. certainly proclaimed and, and taught about the coming kingdom of God. Absolutely. But, Almost more than that, he spent time listening, boldly listening to people. There, there are so many other ways to to express the character and and the and the love of Jesus boldly, without even having to open your mouth. Um, and I think that 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 is a lot of what the world actually needs right now. I think 
I think the world is maybe a little bit tired of bold Christians who are just yelling so much about right. this or that or repent, la la la. Where it might be really refreshing if if there were a group of you know disciples out there who were known for their bold compassion and their bold service and their bold humility. Um, so maybe maybe my my sort of call, what what a bold life means to me, is expanding the avenues in which you can be bold about your faith. Right. Okay, right. I like that. And, yeah, and to, to go off that, I always tell my students, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, Jesus says, you'll be known by your love. People will know you're yeah. my disciples by your love. And that's, and I always try to get that across that, because I, I didn't grow up Christian. I didn't become a Christian until I was 21 and my wife drug me to church after I was married. Um, and I remember, yeah, Christians in school, I didn't always get along with them because they were, you know, mm-hmm. like you're saying, mm-hmm. scream and repent and a little bit yeah. arrogant, um, you know. So I always try to convict to you know, convict my students not to, not to go that way, but to lead with love and, and that people should know that you're a Christian by your love. And then you can like, you know, lead them to Jesus, bring, once they respect you and know you and care about you, then you can actually lead them to Jesus because they're going to care more about who Jesus is knowing who you are. Yeah. That, that word bold, it, it, it really just means to, to highlight or to emphasize yeah. something, right? When, when there's a text that is bolded, it doesn't necessarily mean say it louder. Right. You know, sometimes it means say it with more intention. You know, sometimes it means make sure you really think about this, you know? And so I think living that bold life is really making sure your faith is highlighted, yeah. making sure your faith is emphasized in your words, but also in your actions in your interactions and in your thoughts. Wow. So you just describe my channel much better than I can. I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't think that was so. so good, dude. I don't think, I think so. so. Oh, that was so good, man. Uh, anyway, uh, as we kind of close up here, is there anything you would like to leave the viewers with? Anything you want to tell them? Anything coming up with you? Uh, anything we didn't talk about you'd like to speak on? No, I mean, just... I, I just want to thank you, really. Honestly, I want to thank you for, for having me on, but, but mostly for... Uh, answering the call that God has placed on your life, whether that's been, you know, through youth ministry, which is, as you know, my belief, it is underserved and, and oftentimes served in, in sometimes not the most helpful way, you know? Right. And so I, I am, I am totally in the corner of people who are trying to serve young people, because as we know now, I am a product of yeah. people who have done that. So I want to thank you for that. And thank you for your channel and the work that you're doing on here. Um, and I just want to encourage you because it, it's hard enough for me to to do a channel, right, as my ministry. You got the ministry at church, plus you're doing this. So right. I, I just uh, I want to encourage you in it. And there's not enough people who are taking what God places on their hearts and putting it into action. And so know that you are in a very special minority of people who are who are building the kingdom of God. So I want to encourage you. Awesome. Thank you, man. I do. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, so want to go ahead and leave the viewers where they can connect with you. I'll have yeah, you can find me on, on YouTube. I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, Jeff will link everything below. Um, yeah, check me out. Start with YouTube and then that'll sort of lead you wherever else, uh, whether it's the podcast, whether it's blog posts, books, or, or maybe a, a live engagement I have at some point. Yes. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you joining me, sharing with us. Uh, all right, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Yeah.